In this video, we'll be building a Shopify store using their new AI store builder. This is something that allows you to use all of the power of Shopify, which is used by major brands like Allbirds, Kylie, Gymshark, and more, but we can do it in just a couple minutes using AI. It's really shockingly easy to make a store using this method. You type in a little description and your store name, and it generates the entire store for you, including sample products, images, text, colors, it does everything. And it makes it an absolute breeze to have your store up and running. And then to edit your website, you simply ask it using natural language, and Shopify is able to change things on your store for you. Of all the Shopify stores I've ever built, this is by far the easiest way to get started. You need absolutely no prior skills, and this video is going to be a full tutorial so you can follow along click by click and without wasting any time let's jump right into it so to get started we need to access shopify's ai store builder which is not their regular shopify landing page it's a little tricky to get to so i made a link for you guys you can find it in the description down below or in the pinned comment or you can type in santrellmedia.com slash ai and that will take you to Shopify's AI store builder page. So also make sure it's always up to date. I'll make sure that link always has the latest deals and sales. Right now, there's $1 per month for three months and three days for free. So like a 93 day runway that is pretty low risk for getting started with your store. So to get started, then we just have a simple text box. I'm going to enter what my store is going to be. We only have 100 characters to work with. So try to keep it focused on the big picture here. Now to maximize the information you're sharing here, I recommend kind of rewording things. So here, instead of that sells, I could say selling and I could replace and with a little ampersand. I want to include the store name. And so there we go. Pilates shop selling reformers, mats and home gym equipment. Store name is core align Pilates. Now I can say generate. It'll come up with three options. And if we don't like those, we can just have it generate three more. Now, all of the options that Shopify provides you are going to be both desktop and mobile. So they're called responsive designs. I'll explain how to see both of them in a minute, but they're also very customizable as well. So don't worry if the colors don't match or the fonts or anything like that. This is really just the building blocks for your website. Now I have a banner I want to put across the top. I really don't like this one. This is pretty decent and this one's pretty decent, but I'll try generating one more time. All right, so I actually like these quite a bit more. I think this one really resonates with the brand I want to make, but I can preview it and see if it's really what I'm looking for. We've got a banner across the top, transparent header. I like that. We've got featured products here, a little bit about the, the store. And like I said, we can customize all of this, but I like the way this is starting. So I'm going to choose this theme. You can create an account with Google, Apple, Facebook. I'm just going to go based on my email and make a password the old fashioned way. Now we can enter our credit card details to set up our account. Again, this is free for three days, so we won't be charged anyway. And then it's $1 per month for three months. And then after that, we'll have the plan we select. Now we can select a plan. I think for most people, basic is going to be the right choice. And we can enter some business details. Now it's going to ask us a bunch of questions. You can go through these, or I usually just skip that. That doesn't make a huge difference for the store you're building. And here we go. We're on the Shopify dashboard. On the right side, this is our AI sidekick. This is going to do a lot for us. But on the left side, let's go in and start editing our store. Now, I want to start off by adding my first product. Then designing the store is going to be very easy. So if I click on products on the top, I can then, first of all, it gives us a bunch with that little sample store. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to remove them. I can click on the three dots and I can delete those products. Delete. We don't need those. Now we can add our first product. Click on add product, choose the name of your product, create a description or use AI to generate the description for you. And you can also choose the tone as you see right there. Let's go with expert and we're going to keep this one. Now we can upload media, which could be images, videos, or even 3D models. And we have these three images. The largest one is going to be the main image that's shown for your product. So I actually want this image to be first. I can just click and drag it over to rearrange these and make that one the main image. On the right side, you can organize your product if you want to have the vendor listed here or collections or tags. We can select a price down here. I'm going to go with $249.95 because, well, they just killed the penny. So I'm not going to go with $99 anymore. We can add a compare at price, which you can see right here. We can add a unit price if this is something that is like per ounce, for example, or per foot, per yard, per whatever. It'll show you, you know, the units like that. And we can have our cost down here. Now, other people won't see this. This is just for you, but it'll help you track how much profit you're actually making. So you can see on each item, our margins are 62%. We can track inventory. So right now on our only location, let's say we have 100 in stock. And we have options if we click the little drop down here. Do we want to continue selling when it's out of stock and do back orders? Let's say yes. Our shipping information is right here. So I'm going to say this is maybe 50 pounds. And if you're shipping internationally, you can select the country of origin. I'll scroll way down to United States. 
and you can add the HS code if you have one. Automatically, it pulled the color from the image that we have, and now we have our listing on the bottom. You can see this is what it's going to show up as on Google. So if you want to change the way the listing is, uh, you can customize that right here, but otherwise, we're ready to go. We have this first listing, I will say save, and we have one product. I'm gonna add two more products using the exact same methods, simply by going back to products on the left, clicking add product on the top right, and I won't waste your time, I'm gonna add these two off camera. Now, for these mats that I'm selling, I have three different variants here, just different colors, and if we scroll down, you'll see variants is a box that pops up, so I can click on plus and I'm going to add variants in color. Now, right now it pops up with color. If you click on the plus, you think that would add more colors. That actually adds more variants. So sizes might be another one, but I really wanna click on this and I can add other ones. I'm gonna delete these first. So delete them. Actually, it won't let me delete that one. I have to add the next one. So we're gonna say midnight, midnight blue. We're gonna add midnight blue. The color, we can select an image for this if we wanna have a specific one for midnight blue. I'm just gonna use the same image for all of them and I'll save this one. And now let's get rid of green and we can add the other color. So sage is the next color. We're gonna add sage. If you have the HTML color code, you can add that here, but sage is kind of like that. Again, we'll select an image. I'll say done and I can save this one. And then finally, the third one is black. I could just select that and I could say done. And below that, it'll show you the three variants. So we can add images for each of them. You can see like this image right here. Maybe sage is being used in this image and we can add the black one right here. So we now have those three available and we can have different pricing and we can have different inventory for all of them. So maybe we have a hundred of this, one of this, and, and I don't know, 10 of the last one. So now let's say save and we have three products now in our store. I have a long tutorial, by the way, on how to use Shopify that talks about how to manage collections, inventories, POs, and transfers, but you don't really need to worry about that in this video. Now, one thing I want to do in collections, however, is since there already is a little dummy collection here, I believe that's what they were using on the website to add those multiple boxes at the top. I'll, I'll explain what I mean in a second, but I'm going to edit this collection. I'm just going to click on the collection and I want to add my products to it. So we can browse and let's just add all of our, our three products. I'll say add and they're all in this collection now. Now, we're ready to edit the actual design of our store. If we go down to online store, You'll see themes automatically it brings you here. There's the theme that it created for us. If we scroll down, you can always change this in the future by having a new AI prompt right there to design a new theme, or you can scroll down and view the theme shop, uh, theme store that Shopify has like a thousand themes you could choose from. Most of them are paid. They do have some pretty decent free ones. And I've used these in quite a few tutorials in the past, but let's go with the one that it generated for us. I think it actually does look pretty good and I'm going to remove the password. So we're able to visit this and view this on other devices. And what we do is click on edit theme. So this is what I was talking about. This box right here, featured products. That is actually a collection that it's showing us, collection of products. Uh, it looks like it wants a fourth one, but we have three for now. Now the way this is set up is what's called a section layout. So on the left side, you can see each section is kind of a, a high level on the hierarchy tree. If I click the drop down, you can see everything within that section. So there's like a heading, some text and a button in this one. And they correspond with in the middle, you can see it outlines the entire thing in a large blue rectangle. So each of these, we've got the hero on the top. If I click on that, I'm able to edit anything within that. I can change the image. So I think I actually have an image that I want to upload. And that image is right here. I could say done, and that'll add that as my top image. Looks pretty good so far, but the text is a little bit harder to read now. There's a good way to change that. As we scroll down, you can see there's a lot of settings within this hero section right here that can help us customize any media. So we have two different options for media. We only have one in there right now, which is fine. And we're able to customize, do you wanna stack the media? Do you want a link for this entire section? So if somebody clicks anywhere on here, maybe it'll go over to the product. And let's say, yeah, we do wanna do that. We wanna to tag to our product. If I click on products, we can go to the reformer. Most likely people clicking on this are interested in the reformer. And we can open that in a new tab. So they still have the home page here. And then in a new tab, they can learn more about the reformer. We can also customize our layout down here, the position of buttons, the height and the width and stuff like that. The color scheme is something that we'll be adjusting for each section, but that's pretty uniform across our entire website. You're able to customize this. Obviously you can select them right here, but you're able to customize what the color schemes actually are by going on the left side, clicking on theme settings, clicking on colors, and then we can select, say, Scheme 4 is the one being used here, and I can change what those colors actually are. Maybe I want the background to be a little bit 
Maybe I want the background to be a little darker, or maybe I want this accent line down here to be more of a black or a green. Once you're happy with your color schemes and you can edit all of them or even add more, most websites have about five or six, then we can go back to the sections where we were and we can scroll down. And like I said, there's a good way to make this more visible and that is with a section overlay. So if we scroll down here, there already is an overlay. You'll see it if I turn it off, it gets a lot brighter. So there's kind of a dark gray overlay on here. Let's toggle that back on and let's change what that color is actually going to be. Maybe the overlay is gonna be like a really dark green. That was a solid green. We want it to be a transparent. So there's transparency slider on the right side here. I can change what that actually looks like. That doesn't look great, don't get me wrong, but if you find the, the right level, it'll not only be more readable, but also give a, a pretty nice tone to your entire website. We can also make it a gradient. So most of the overlays like at the bottom, for example, if it's going up or down. And so that could be a good way to have the floor look more natural and the top look different, or maybe the bottom look more green, but the sky looks quite natural. There are many settings in there. I'm not gonna waste time going through that, but if we go back to where we were in that hero section, we can add more blocks. We can customize what's in groups and we can change a lot about this. Now, ultimately, I don't think there's a great way to have this text in front of the reformer. Really what you wanna do is change the image, but to make things easier for this tutorial, I'm just going to remove the text entirely. I can click on the eye icon right there and it hides it, which actually looks quite good on this website now. You can also click the trash can to delete it. If we scroll down, we can customize everything down here, or we can use AI to actually do this stuff for us. So over here, I could say, please change our product. I wanna change it to three products instead of four, shown in the featured products grid right here. And just like that, the AI was able to do that for us. I think that's pretty good. And over here, you can see it highlights it in purple, what it actually changed. So you can either change it back or you can customize it even further. If we scroll down, we have, we have this little blurb it made for us and everything else actually looks pretty solid down here. On the bottom, we have a marquee, but I really want that to scroll the other way. So again, let's ask our sidekick, please make the marquee, hit enter and see if it's able to do that. There we go, it did it. That was really easy to do. And it saves you the hassle of having to learn how to change all of the settings. It's all available on the left side, which is why I like to show that. But on the right side, this is really what you'll be doing most of the time when you're trying to edit your entire website. Maybe on the bottom, we wanna change the social icons. Obviously you can click on that and you're able to edit it right here, but you can also see the sidekick pops up next to each thing you click on. So I can ask for changes relevant to just that and say, remove the TikTok, X and threads links. And it'll just have Instagram and YouTube, I believe should be the only ones remaining. It's making the changes. Yeah, and look at that. It did it. It does a really good job of that. If I click on it on the left side, we have the links. It's just going to Shopify right now. So maybe instead I want it to go to mine. So Mike O'Brien with two ends and Shopify could just go to Santrell Media for the YouTube link. And there we go. So I think you're getting the hang of how you can actually edit this with AI. It's honestly not that hard to do when you're using the sidekick on the right side. If I close the sidekick either by accident or on purpose, you can always reopen him by clicking on the little sidekick button on the very top and it'll reappear on the right side. Now I mentioned this is going to be a responsive website. So this looks good on both desktop and mobile. If I click on mobile, you can see what it actually looks like. And on mobile, this kind of shifts the, the actual main focus a little bit away from where it should be. So maybe I wanna change that. Let's open Sidekick and say on mobile. Now, by the way, little thing that's subtle here, but you'll notice it still is editing the social media links. I wanna hover over that and close that out so it's editing the entire website. I'm gonna send this and say, I just wanna reposition that image when I'm on mobile. It's telling me the best way to do it is to upload a custom mobile image. So let's say we wanna do that. And it's not able to do absolutely everything. So with some things like this, it'll tell you how you can actually go about doing that. And it walks you through step-by-step step what you wanna to click to do that. I'm gonna go back to the desktop editor, close out of Sidekick, click on save at the top. And like I said, I have a much more in-depth design tutorial if you want to manually do a lot of the edits yourself. But as far as getting our store up and running, this is a really good way to do that. Let's click on exit right now. And there's a couple key settings we need to change to have our store actually able to accept payments. So if we go down to settings, we can customize, of course, in general, the store name and the billing address and things like that. Order IDs can be customized, but I wanna go down to payments and we can set up several different ways to accept payments. The main one is going to be Shopify payments, which will allow you to accept credit cards from all the major suppliers out there. I'm gonna activate Shopify payments and all you have to do is complete the account setup. It's gonna walk you through the process. It's going to ask for your business or personal information, your address and other important things. Obviously you're accepting payments, so it needs to verify your identity. 
Once that is complete, check your email. There are several emails you will need to verify now. One is your Shopify account. You wanna click verify on that one. You also want to verify your Shopify payments here. So that's all set up. And next we need to get a domain for this website. So if we go down to domains, you'll see we can buy one through Shopify. You are able to save a couple dollars going through something like Namecheap, which if you wanna save a couple dollars, go ahead and do that. It's a little bit more technically advanced. It's not really that difficult, but it's gonna take you some extra steps. It may be a little frustrating. I personally think I'm gonna buy a new domain. So let's look up corealignpiladishop.com. It looks like it's $16 per year. If I go to Namecheap and I search for the same domain, you can see here it's $12 per year. So you're saving $4 a year. You just have to point it over to Shopify. And if you wanted to do that, if I go back on Shopify, you can connect an existing domain right here. It's not that difficult, but like I said, it's just so much easier to go through Shopify. I usually do that. All right, so now we have products, we have our store design, we have our domain, we have payments. We are ready to have people shop on this store. This is a full-blown professional Shopify store. Congratulations on building that, by the way, but you're not done yet. You're ready to start going for sure, but once you have all of this completed, the next steps are going to be building out some little nuances to help you rank on Google, to add more content, more pages on your website, to improve conversions. And I talk about all of that in a more advanced video, a full length, it's like an hour and a half tutorial on how to set up your Shopify store. And we have a step-by-step -step checklist. I'll put that in the description down below. It's a PDF. We don't have any upsells. We're not selling you a course. We don't have, we don't even have a way to accept your credit card, honestly. The PDF is totally free and it's a checklist to help you get your store set up. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Leave a comment and let me know what kind of store you're starting. I would love to be a customer. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them as well. I'm Michael Bryan with Santral Media and I'll see you in that advanced level two tutorial.